Okay, so this is uh, gonna be kind of a, I guess a, a long ramble about Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory. I don't necessarily have a script planned for this at all. Um, I'm literally just talking off the top of my head from memory just about uh, my experiences with the game, I guess. Um, so, yeah, just uh, sit back and enjoy the nonsense. Um, so, Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory is pretty good. I'll just start by saying that. I thought it was a lot of fun, even if it's not necessarily super mechanically sound. Um, I think the game itself is solid. Um, there's a lot about it that is really hit or miss, I'd say. Um, so I, I guess I'll talk about the three, I guess, main, um, the main gameplay styles. Um, and so there's the regular, like, the field music, and then there's, uh, the, like, event music, I guess you'd call it. And then there's, um, boss fights. And each of these are pretty distinct entities. So, uh, I'll start with the field music, and it is easily the strongest part of the game. Typically, if there's a song that is playable in field music, which I'm pretty sure all of them are, it is most definitely the most fun way to play it. Um, defeating the enemies as they, like, slide towards you or move towards you is actually, like, a lot of fun. And I like the way that enemies can dynamically move around the map to either fit the song or... Uh, to match their sort of styles in their respective games. Um, so like, for example, the dancer enemies, which typically rush Sora, tend to move forward a lot faster than the other nobody enemies do, which I think is really cool. And little details like that are all throughout the rhythm game, so really they did a good job of, uh, like, the idea of having knowledge of Kingdom Hearts enemies helps out quite a bit here in Melody of Memory. That being said, there are a few things about it that I, like, don't like. Um, there are these little, like, glide sections where you have to jump and hold the jump button. Um, and I find these to be a little bit unresponsive at times if you jump and then release and then press the button, which is very tempting to do considering, you know, it's a rhythm game and you're going to be following the beat of the song with button presses. Um, that is a little bit unresponsive at times. Uh, sometimes Sora will just fall instead of catching the glide. And it was something that really caught me a lot when I was first playing through the game. Luckily, you don't lose any HP for missing these glide targets, so that wasn't a big minus. Um, getting used to the controls was a big thing for me. <laughs> um, the major issues are that it doesn't use, like... Uh, let's just say, let's take Tyco PS4, for example. Um, Tyco PS4 uses, when you're using the actual controller, typically uses a button and then the corresponding D-pad button to help you, like, to, like, follow the rhythm, I guess. Um, and then it uses another uh, set of those for the other sets of buttons. Melody of Memory is a essentially a one-button rhythm game. It's technically a three-button, but, like, most of the inputs are interchangeable anyways. So, um, that's, like, I guess, uh, kind of a problem <laughs> uh, in and of itself. I've never been a fan of that kind of rhythm game. I think they're kind of lazy. Um... I mean, I don't want to get too deep in it because this isn't, like, a big scripted video or anything. If I ever go back to Rhythm Game Reviews, that'll definitely be a topic that I discuss. Is these sort of one-button rhythm games. You see them a lot with mobile ports. Uh, things like, um, Voez Demo, I think, was one of them. I think. I only played the demo for that one, so, you know, not too sure. Um, yeah, not a crazy big fan of that kind of, I guess... Uh, style of rhythm game, but I think Kingdom Hearts does it decently well where up to three inputs are required at times and Typically all you need to worry about is alternating between the L and R buttons which got which fucked me up so much 
Adding the X button into this mix was really awkward, I feel. All of the face buttons were really awkward in this setup. Uh, especially when you hit the ability crystals and you have to hit triangle. Mm, not a fan of that. I thought that was, like, okay at best. Um, it felt good when it was by itself, but, like, occasionally they'll throw it in, like, the middle of something where it's, like, two regular hits and a triangle or hit, hit, triangle or something like that. And that just feels really awkward to hit because the triangle is so far removed from everything else you're doing in the game. Um... If that makes any sense, I guess. Uh, same thing with the glide targets. But the glide targets are, like, I guess a little bit more acceptable. Because typically, once you're up in the air, you don't really need to pay a whole lot of, like, a whole lot of attention to what you're doing up there. Occasionally, there's, like, a thing where it's like, ooh, you gotta move left and right now while you're hitting the buttons. And I'm not a fan of that at all. But most of the time, it's fine. Um... And I guess, <laughs> to get to the point of all that, the inputs are a little clumsy. Like, a lot of clumsy. But a lot of the times, uh, the charts feel pretty good to play. Especially some of the faster ones with more concise melodies. Um, things like, oh, I don't know, One Winged Angel is a lot of fun. Um, Tension Rising is another one that's, like, really fun. Um, however, on the flip side of that, there's also a couple of them, like the Lion King themes, that are just really not fun to play. Yeah, they're just, like, certain things are just really not fun. And I don't really know why they did it that way. There's certain songs, um, Rage Awakened, the Kingdom Hearts 2 version, is like this, where they just don't follow the melody of the song at all. And, like, I, I get it. You're not necessarily supposed to always follow the melody when making a rhythm game, you know? Sometimes you can follow just the beat if you want, but... Oh my god, never, ever follow the harmony line. Never do it. That's a bad idea. Ev like, what people's ears are drawn to is the melody line. And typically when you're playing a rhythm game, you don't want to have to worry about the harmony lines of the songs... Because you're too busy trying to focus on what the inputs are and hitting them with the proper timing. Which is why you keep things to just melody lines. And for whatever reason, there's a couple of songs that just go to the harmony for some reason? I don't know, I'm gonna chalk that up to, like, the Kingdom Hearts music being admittedly very hard to, I guess, map into a rhythm game. However, the another option is to just not include the pride lands just don't do it leave it out there is no um pirates of the caribbean music in the game none of it when it would have been a great fit for the game i feel and like the lion king themes are absolutely not a good fit <laughs> I get that maybe they didn't want to include it because Johnny Depp's kind of a hot button issue for some reason at the moment. You know, you wouldn't think he would be, but there's some people who still believe that he abused his wife when it was really the other way around. I'm not going to get too deep into that, but, you know, that's one possible explanation for what happened there and why that's not in there. But that doesn't explain why he was in Kingdom Hearts 3, so, you know, who knows. Um... Yeah, um, so I guess we can move on to the next style of music. I guess I've, I've sort of ran my talking points on uh, the field music, which I think are, to give them, I guess, an arbitrary score, like an 8 out of 10. Maybe a 7, maybe an 8, depending on the song. I think it can be used really well, but typically they don't in some, like, spots. Um, you're really subjective to random songs, but... The uh, like the next style, I'm I'm gonna skip the event music and I'm gonna talk about the bosses real quick. The bosses are a mess. They are a complete and total disaster, as far as I'm concerned. I think they're cool. I don't think they're necessarily very fun, especially not for, I guess newer rhythm game players, which I'm assuming this game would bring in a lot of. Um, I'm very experienced with, with rhythm games, as you guys can probably guess. 
So I was able to play the boss sections fairly well. Um, I was never really distracted by the background, but like some call me Johnny's video was a perfect example of this. He complained that they were super disorienting, and I get that. There are some neat moments in them, uh, especially like with the final boss. I think that was cool. Um, however, they didn't necessarily work. They they don't translate very well to a rhythm game. Um, typically, the bosses kind of end suddenly without much warning. There's not really a whole lot of spectacle to them, again, outside of the final boss. Like, even Xemnas, when he shows up and you have to fight him, uses just this baby version of his moves that are super underwhelming. Like, he fires at most three lasers, I think, when we've seen him do so much more. Um, and, I don't know, it just came across as being really underwhelming a lot of the time with the designs and on top of that there are very few of them i think part of this definitely comes down to like the fact that several bosses that should have been boss fights were cut completely um just to name a few marluxia Vinitas, terra xehanort um who else who else got cut xehanort himself until the finale um Bragg, I guess? Aqua's final boss theme from Birth by Sleep, I, I guess, goes to Bragg. Or you could have it be Vanitas Ventus, one of the two. Um, so, yeah, those are kind of some issues. Um, oh god, they also didn't, like... They didn't even touch um, Dream Drop's final bosses either. Even though a young Xehanort battle would totally have fit in. And yet, for some reason, Maleficent had a boss fight in there. It's very strange that, like, it's Xehanort form, Xehanort form, Xehanort form, Maleficent, instead of the final Xehanort form. It's very odd. Um, otherwise, I think they're fine. They play okay, and once you, like, are used to them, it's easy enough to figure out when you're supposed to hit the buttons. Which is more than I can say for the final style of gameplay, which are the event music tracks. And there are a lot of these. Uh, every character main theme it takes place on one of these. And all of the opening themes do as well. Um, these have the character like flying forward while a video plays in the background. And oh my god, do these suck. They suck real bad. Um... There's not really, at times, a proper way to measure when you want to hit the button. There's the approach circle, which I'm not at all a fan of approach circles. Uh, maybe that puts me at odds with some people in the rhythm game community. I don't know. I just don't like them very much. I think they're uh, really obnoxious. Um, and they don't really help you time much. If anything, actually, when I try to rely on them, it sort of throws off my timing, and I don't do very well on games that require me to look at approach circles. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of a big deal, is when your player has no way to get their bearings on when you're supposed to hit, that entire style of gameplay tends to just fall apart. Um, not to mention the incredibly distracting videos that play in the background even for me i could not ignore them and maybe it's because i love kingdom hearts but i don't know it says a lot when i'm able to rhythmically beat back a bunch of heartless that are all moving out of sync from each other um i'm able to figure that one out but video in the background nah can't do it I don't know. And I don't normally get caught by that. I, I'm not normally tricked by that. Maybe it's just, it's like a perfect storm of a lot of really obnoxious design elements on rhythm games that sort of just came together to be really not very fun. I don't play them a whole lot. Um, but like, it's, it's whatever. Um, it's just one style of gameplay of the three. If I, if I had to give them all scores, like I said, it'd be like a 7 or an 8 out of a 10 for the field music, and like I'd say like a 6 out of a 10 for the boss music, and like a 4 out of 10 for the field music. I think that pretty much 
uh, puts, I guess, puts them into perspective. Um, I don't think this is necessarily the perfect rhythm game, but I think it's, like, it's pretty much okay. Uh, it added some good stuff to the lore that I'm not going to talk about here, but it's setting up a hopefully very fun game that, I guess, minor spoiler warnings, is hopefully going to lead into a Kyrie-centric game in the future, like a real one. This one was not a real Kyrie-centric game. I'm just going to put that out there. Um, although, real quick, just to throw in a quick spoiler warning for this game. Um, yeah, they kind of throw away Kyrie at the last minute and make you fight the final boss of Sora. It's super jarring. Kyrie's like being a badass and she's fighting against the final boss and she's doing well for the most part, but... Sora has to step in and save her, and it's like, what the fuck? I thought this was Kairi's game. I, I thought this was hers, you know? Why am I now being forced to play as Sora again? I don't know. It's just weird. Um, I guess other things in the game uh, to round out the video. Um, I like the museum mode. It's very similar to the collector cards from Theta Rhythm. Which I liked that system as well, so um, Museum is good in my books. Although I could have done with maybe a little bit more of a difference between the Platinum Rare and the Gold Rare items that you get. I just think that there's not enough of a difference to really care about grinding them all out, so there's that. Um, synthesizing was a fun, creative idea to get new songs, and most of the songs that you get out of them are pretty good. So it is definitely worth a time investment. Um, what else is in this game? I thought World Tour was incredibly boring for the most part. Uh, very much so felt like I was playing a mobile rhythm game as opposed to a $60 home console rhythm game where I was filling in stars and playing a very simplified rhythm game. Uh, that was not something I was very crazy about. And... Uh, what else is in this game? There's co-op, but I, I haven't been given a chance to try that out. And I don't have PlayStation Plus, so I don't care about the online mode. Um, uh, there's the different characters. Uh, it really doesn't make that much of a difference outside of aesthetics. Um, my favorite's Team Days, just because I am a sucker for Roxas, Axel, Shion. I think they are... Just the best trio in the series, and anyone who says otherwise can fight me. And I was stoked to be able to play as them again. Although, not super crazy that it's yet another subpar Kingdom Hearts game that ha like has the side characters playable. Like, what the hell, guys? I swear, there's, just, there's something at Square Enix that's like, hey, if it doesn't star Sora, you don't have to put work into it. Not to say that games like Birth by Sleep or, or um, what else? Uh, Birth by Sleep, 358 Days. Not to say that those are necessarily, like, bad games, but I'm definitely not, like, as in love with them as I am the actual mainline games. I don't know. Birth by Sleep's kind of an exception to that because it's, like, a masterpiece, but whatever. Um, ooh. I can talk a little bit about a couple of the songs in there that I really liked. Um, there are a total of, I think, six DS-exclusive songs with DS-exclusive maps. It's two Neverland themes from 358 Days, along with a Neverland map from 358 Days, which I am crazy about. I, While I hated Neverland from Days, I liked Days itself for the most part. So, um, yeah, th that was, like, kind of cool to see. And then, uh, for the Kingdom Hearts game that I only ever, like, I'm the only person who's ever played it, as far as I'm concerned, uh, Kingdom Hearts Recoded got two songs in there and HD updated maps that did not show up anywhere else in the series, um, I would have to watch the movie again to, like, see if it shows up in there, but... To my knowledge, it doesn't. Uh, but you do get to in see inside of a PS4 rendered system sector, which is really a PS2 rendered system sector, but whatever. Um, 
which I thought was cool. I thought that was really cool. Um, and it plays, like, updated versions of each of the themes that are, like, kind of remastered a little bit. Which, again, really cool. Really, really nice of them to do that. They didn't need to do that. They could have just left those songs out. But the fact that they did it shows that they still care about these side games that, you know, aren't necessarily super popular within the fandom. Again, like I said, as far as I know, I'm the only person who ever played Recoded. So, uh, you know, whatever. Um... Yeah, other than that, I'd say that's that's pretty much a lot of my thoughts on um, Melody of Memory. I think it's a really neat trip down memory lane for fans of the series. Um, maybe it wasn't necessarily needed at this point in time, but, I mean, it was still neat nonetheless. Uh, decently solid rhythm game, although certain mechanics are definitely better than others. Um... And yeah, I think it's I think it's definitely worth at least thirty dollars, not the full sixty, but like if you can find it at a reduced price later, I and you're like a Kingdom Hearts fan or something, uh, definitely recommend it. If you're just into rhythm games though, um, and you don't know what the fuck a Kingdom Hearts is, I mean, other than my general advocacy for everybody to play the series, don't jump in with this one. Just don't do it. Um, it covers way too much way too quickly when it is covering, like, Kingdom Hearts content. And everything will just leave you sort of lost and confused. <laughs> um, it is not the ideal way to experience Kingdom Hearts. But yeah, other than that, um, that is going to be everything that I had to say uh, during this. Sort of a filler video, I know, but uh, I needed more time for the couple of video projects that I'm working on. Which there are a large number of them coming out in the future, hopefully. Um, I might lay off of the highlights just for a little bit after this next one comes out. Just so that I can get ahead on a couple of the video ideas that I've had for a while but haven't been able to act on, I guess. Uh, and I hope to get all that done over winter break. Um... As far as highlights are concerned, uh, look forward to the Sonic and the Secret Rings highlight, which should be coming... I don't like putting ETAs on stuff, because not only does it date this video, it dates other stuff, and it puts me on a clock. But I hope to get that out in the next week or two. Um, I still have a lot of footage to edit through, and it is a lot of boring footage intercut with a lot of really hilarious things happening, so I can't just skip through stuff, you know? <laughs> I need to find, like, the actual good stuff. Um... Otherwise, yeah, that's going to be it for me for uh, this video, I guess. Uh, if you guys, I guess, like me rambling for whatever reason, uh, subscribe or whatever. Um, I stream on Twitch occasionally. Uh, you guys should go follow me on there. It's really the main crux of my content at the moment. And uh, otherwise, yeah, um, thank you guys for listening to me ramble for so fucking long. Um, I'm gonna go give my voice a little bit of a rest because I have had a sore throat for eh, a little bit today. Um, so I'm just gonna let myself relax and yeah, you guys have a wonderful night.